before we get stuck into the sign rule, looking at what it is and how we use it, I think it's useful to recap what we know about triangles so far and where the sign rule fits into this. If you would prefer just to skip this, use the timings down in the description. But otherwise, just think this through or maybe make a few notes as you're going. And let's try and think about what we know. So pause the video, quickly think about these three areas and what you could write to add to this mind map. We know how to calculate the area of a triangle. It's half times base times height, and that works for any triangle, whether it's a right angle triangle or not, as long as we know that vertical height, the perpendicular height to the base. With angles, we know they always add up to, I don't know where that three came from, they always add up to 180 degrees in a triangle. We know with equilateral triangles, the three angles are equal. It's always 60 degrees. And for isosceles, the base angles are always equal. Now be careful, often you do see an isosceles triangle drawn this way around with the angles at the base of the triangle, but you must remember the base angles means they're at the base of the sides, which are the same length. So when you get an isosceles triangle like this on its side, these are the sides which are the same length. So the base angles are the one at the base of those sides. So just be mindful of that in questions. You've done a lot with right angle triangles. If we're trying to find the length of a missing side and we know two of the other sides, then we can use Pythagoras to calculate the missing side. Or if we're trying to find a missing side and we know one side and one angle, we can use trigonometry to help us with that. We can also find a missing angle. If we know two sides, then we use trigonometry as well. So these are areas we've covered before and hopefully you're fairly confident with. One area we haven't looked at much is triangles that are not right angled. So where the sign rule fits in is here with looking at how to calculate missing sides and missing angles in triangles which are not right angled. OK, it does also hold for those which are it will work for any triangle. First thing we need to look at here is how to label triangles to use with the sign rule. The vertices are labelled with capital letters and we normally use A, B and C. The sides are lowercase. And hopefully you can see that angles and sides which are opposite each other, we use the same letters for. Now, if we put a couple of values on here, so the angle at A is 85 degrees and the opposite side is 10, 10 centimetres. Just want to look at this quickly. If we do the length of the side divided by the sine of the angle, so we've got 10 divided by sine 85 degrees. If I calculate that, I get 10.04 to two decimal places. If we look at another opposite pair, so we've got the angle here at B and the length of the opposite side here, and we do the same. So B divided by sine B. Now, hopefully you remember that sine 30 is a half or at least you should be able to work that out using the work we did on exact trig values. And so this gives us 10.04 as well. Looking a bit familiar. The final pair we've got here. So the angle at C is 65. The length of the opposite side is 9.1. So again, if I do the length of the side divided by the sine of the angle, We're going to get the same 
answer again. So we can see these three values are equal. And that's basically what the sine rule is. What it says is the length of a side divided by the sine of the opposite angle is equal to the length of another side divided by the sine of the angle opposite to that. It will make more sense when we put it into use. So the first example here, we've got an opposite pair here. And we've got an opposite pair here. Now for the sine rule to work, we need to have two opposite pairs with one missing value, which is X here. And that's the length we're trying to find. So we know that the length of the side, so that's 11 over the sine of the opposite angle is equal to the length of the side divided by the sine of the opposite angle. So to calculate X, if we multiply both sides by a sine of 40 degrees, we're gonna have sine of 40 degrees times 11 divided by sine 34. And that's gonna give us our value for X. And the calculator gives that as 12.64. We're being asked here to round to the nearest millimeter so X is equal to 13 millimeters. Remember when you're calculating with trig functions, be really careful, I should have been better and drawn the brackets in here. The calculator will open the brackets for you automatically. If you don't close them, it can affect the calculator. For example, if I hadn't put the bracket in here when I was calculating, it would be trying to do the sign of all of this together. So make sure you get that bracket in. Pause the video, have a try on this one. So we can see the vertices have been labelled here and we can see we've got an angle here and the length of the opposite side. So we've got one pair. We've got the length of the side we're trying to find plus the opposite angle here. So we've got our two pairs with one value missing. So we write out our equation. We then rearrange it. And then calculating this, it comes out as 7.28 but the question is asking us the nearest 0.1 centimeter. So let's put that as 7.3 centimeters. First task is these five questions. They're also on the sheets attached to show my homework. So you need to work out the missing value for these, which is the length of a side each time. They start off nice and straightforward, but then be a bit careful later on. Like in question four, we can see here we've got a pair, we've got an angle. We're trying to find the opposite side. Here we've got an angle, but we're not given the opposite side here. Here we've got the length of the side, but we're not given the opposite angle here. But think about what you know about triangles. We'll be looking at questions a bit more like four and five on here later on. So if you're not sure about those, you can leave them for now. But for these, you need to calculate the length of the missing side. You then need to round it to the nearest whole number, find your answer in this box here, and write down the word. And when you've done all of them, this task, task two and task three, uh, you should have a sentence spelt out. And hopefully that'll help you check as you go that it's kind of making sense the audio getting the words in. So pause the video, have a go with that. So the example here is now asking us to calculate the missing angle, the angle marked theta here. We can use this form of the sine rule to help us with that, but there is an easier way. We can rewrite it like this, and that makes calculating angles easier, and you'll see why as we go through this first example. Now, just to explain why these two forms both work, if I just write out part of the version we've been using so far, and we'll just quickly think about rearranging this. If we multiply both sides by sine A, 
then we can multiply both sides by sine b. If we then divide both sides by a and divide both sides by b, and we can see this version that we use for missing angles is just a rearrangement of the version we were using in the previous task for missing sides. You don't need to remember that, but you do need to remember both versions of the sign rule. You won't be given those in an exam, you need to know them, but it's nice and easy to remember because it works either way. So back to our question here, we've got the angle theta and the opposite side, and we've also got a pair in the angle and the opposite side here. So with the angle on top, we can rearrange it, multiply both sides by 4.3, So it should be a times. So if I calculate what's on the left of the equal side, that will give me the value for the sine of theta. Calculator gives it as this value. And I'm not going to round this yet. It keeps on going. I'm not going to round it. I'll use that answer in the next step of the calculation. Because that's not the angle we're after. That's the sine. Of the angle. So to find the angle itself, we need to use the inverse trig function. And we write it like this. And when I do it on my calculator, I will use answer in here for this bit in the brackets. Now that came out with an answer about four degrees, which seemed wrong. So looking back, I've just spotted here, I didn't copy through this decimal point. So this should be that value there. And then when I do the inverse sine of that, I get 52.26 degrees, but it's asked me in the question here just to get to the nearest degree. So 52 degrees. One note about using a calculator. So here I worked out this value first, which I've got here, and then I did the inverse sine of that. Remember, you can put that whole calculation inside your inverse sine. So if you're confident and you want to do that on one step on your calculator, you could do it like this. And that'll do it in one step. If you prefer, you can do it slightly longer way like I have done here. So example here, pause the video, have a go. So first of all, I look for my matching pairs and then I write out my equation with these. And I need to rearrange these by multiplying both sides by 10. And it gives me this value on the calculator. Remember, I'm not gonna round it yet. I'm gonna use the full answer in there because to find the angle theta, I now need to use inverse sine. That's inverse sine of the last value there. And that gives me 39.67. And the answer again asks for it's the nearest degree, 40 degrees. Have a try with these questions following on from the task before, so the sentence should continue. Again, look out for those opposite pairs. Towards the end, you'll see the pairs aren't straightforward. Think what you know about triangles, but we will look a bit more at questions like those in a moment. Pause the video, have a go. If you've managed all the questions so far, you may not need this example and your turn pair, but just wanted to have a look at a bit more where we haven't got obvious pairs in our triangles. So here we're trying to find the length BC. So this is the length BC here. I'll label that X. We don't know 
the opposite angle. What we do know is we do have a pair here. We do have another angle here. And we know the angles at 180 degrees. If we know two of the angles, then we can easily find the third. So now we have all the information we need to solve the problem. So we'll write out our equation, multiply both sides by sine 52. And given the answer to the nearest 0.1 centimetres, we get 4.8 centimetres. The your turn question here is different, but it's similar in the way that we don't immediately have the information for those two pairs. Pause the video, give it a try. So we're looking for the angle CAB. So that's the angle at A, the middle letter there. But we don't know the opposite side either. So we've got to look at how we can use the information we've got. We've got an opposite pair that works here. We've also got the length here, but we don't know the angle. The steps we can do to find it, if we find this angle first at B, we'll then know two angles. And so then we can work out the angle at A and we won't need to use the sine rule for that second step. So the answer for sine of B comes out here as this value. Again, we're not going to round it yet. We want to keep that full value, so we'll use the answer key on our calculators to help us with this. And this is the sine of the angle. So to find the angle, we need to be using the inverse sine. Of our previous answer here. If we do that, that gives us this angle here. So that's the angle there at B. So if I just clear a bit of this in the diagram, it might help us see it. We know this is to the nearest degree, 21 degrees. We know this is 54. So to find the angle here at A, all we need to do now is take those two away from 180 to get the answer 105 degrees. So with these questions, you need to think through a little bit more how you're going to use the information that's given. Should give you the last four words for your sentence. I apologise for the nonsense in there, but hopefully it's been useful to check it. So pause the video, have a try at those. Hopefully you'll feel, hopefully you'll get there with these. They are trickier. Last thing I just want to look at is return to where we started at the beginning. So this was the information we were looking at at the start of the lesson. What we've got now to fill in is the use of the sign rule. So we can use it to find missing angles or missing sides if we know two pairs of sides and angles with one missing value. And that works both for non right angle triangles and right angle triangles as well. This is the end of the main bit of the lesson. There's a little extension on the next slide, but that doesn't have to be done. That's totally optional. So your challenge here is to prove the sign rule to show where it comes from using knowledge you had before this lesson. I've got three sets of hints that I'll put up. If you don't want to hear them at all, pause the video now, give this a go. This is the first hint I'll give you. You're going to need to use that. In about another five seconds, I'll put the next hints up. Now, this might be enough to get you thinking through. There's a couple more steps after this. Pause it if you don't want to see them, if you want to challenge yourself. But I'll put those up now. And I'll talk you through how we use this. So the first step, we want to write an expression for X in terms of sine B. Remember from our trig functions, from our Sokotoa, 
we have this triangle here. So we know that the sine of B is equal to the opposite. So there's our angle B. The opposite is X divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. Then how to write an expression for X in terms of sine C. So we're looking over here. Sine C is equal to the opposite which again is x divided by the hypotenuse, which is b. Now, if we rearrange both of these, if I multiply the first equation by c on both sides, we're going to have c times sine b is equal to x. For the second equation, I'll multiply both sides by b, so we'll have b multiplied by sine c is equal to x. Now we can use this to write an equation involving both sine b and sine c. So c times sine b is equal to x, which is equal to b times sine c. And then it's just a case of rearranging. We can divide both sides by c. We can divide both sides by B. And you can see we've got our version of the sine rule here that we use to find missing angles. If back on the first step here are divided by sine B and then sine C, we would have got the version that we use for missing sides. And this is for B and C. If we'd have split the triangle in different ways, we could have kept it notated the same way, but say we'd used that line being X, we would have done the same for sine A and sine B. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. You don't need to know this proof, but I thought it might be interesting to have a look at where it comes from.